Aloha and welcome to What Do Your Dreams Mean? Um, I'm doing a podcast on this because I get a lot of questions about what do your dreams mean? And because I did a podcast in the past, um, I still get a flood of emails going, well, what does this mean and what does that mean? And I'm really interested in this subject and people are super, super interested in dreaming and what it means and dream translation and how to do it. And, you know, they'd like help translating their dreams. So I decided to do um, a video on it to explain this a little bit more. But before we get into what do your dreams mean and the translation aspect of it, I find something super cool about dreaming and it's something that a lot of people don't realize or don't understand when it comes to the dreaming world. And basically that is, um, what, do, what is dreaming? What does that mean? What is happening when that's going on? Dreaming is basically a gateway into your psychic ability and it's uh, also a window into your spiritual self and your spiritual body. And that's such a cool thing, you guys. You don't even know how cool this is for many different reasons. Number one, for people who are having blocks when it comes to developing their psychic ability or they're wanting to develop it further. And they're really, a lot of blocks from psychic ability comes, comes from not really understanding you know, if, okay, is this true or that true? Do we really have this ability or that ability? And then uh, when you're learning more about dreamings, when you're learning, dreaming, when you're learning more about what your spiritual body is actually doing and how this works with your life for 50% of the time, uh, then you, you know you dream, you know that you have these scenarios go on during your dream state, you know that you sleep, etc. But you're not really getting the full picture and the full knowledge of what's happening there and that can be super helpful when it comes to using your psychic abilities and also that in turn becomes helpful to interpreting your dreams so learning about psychic ability helps interpret your dreams and learning about your dreams helps develop your psychic ability and both of these things can actually help you in your day-to-day -day life and so that's my favorite thing about it my second favorite thing about it is people ask me often how do I turn in, tune into my spiritual body, number one, and then if they want to learn how to tune into their spiritual body, how do I find balance with my spiritual body, my physical body? And so it can also help you learn how to find balance because you start learning um, basically what I call some cheat sheet ways to see what kind of vibration or what things are going on under the surface with your spiritual body that you may or may not know about. In fact, a lot of times, even if you're very advanced psychically, even people such as myself, uh, when you go into a dream state, you definitely have, it's like having a window into what's happening vibrationally when your mind wants to ignore what's happening vibrationally so for us um, who are interpreting it it's a super awesome thing so the what people think happens when they're dreaming is they think that they're basically resting you know they think that they're basically um, resting their bodies and you know resting their brain or whatever and you are essentially resting your brain to a sense but what's happening with your physical body when you um, sit in a chair such as I'm doing right now or you're driving in your car is it's been proven scientifically that you get enough rest for your physical body during the day by just sitting it periodically and whatnot um, so it's not for your physical body. When you dream and when you go into the spiritual realm, this is the time where you're actually quieting your spiritual body. So basically, what happens during dream time? You're learning how to quiet your physical body and you're learning how to raise your vibration, or not learning, you're naturally raising your vibration of your physical body. So, or your spiritual body sorry I'm getting so excited I'm kind of intertwining everything so it's the time when you quiet your physical body in order to raise the vibration of your spiritual body well why why would we do this during half the time well because it's been a safeguard that's been put in place for when we were created so think about it for those of people who 
maybe don't believe in the spiritual body or don't believe in any psychic abilities or any spiritual aspect of themselves. If they don't believe in it or don't understand it, they're, they would not take the time to sleep or dream if they thought that it was basically for you know our spiritual body and for it to recharge itself they would blow it off if they possibly could so in order for those people and everybody who basically don't have um, the further knowledge on what's happening when, from a spiritual aspect from your spiritual body aspect they definitely our creators have put in a safeguard so that we align our spiritual body each night and we align it by raising our vibration each night so just think about this half of your life half of the time you are spending your time in the physical world doing physical things and the other half of your time or um, a little over I would say a third of your time you're actually spending time in the spiritual realm and you're spending time adjusting aligning and raising the vibration of your spiritual body now the key here um, during your waking time, since we're, we're doing it uh, during the daytime with our physical body, we're, we're using that. And then at nighttime, we're, we're aligning and raising the um, vibration of our spiritual body. The key here is to learn how to keep that vibration raised when you come to the waking hours of your physical body. Because what happens currently with a lot of people is they raise their vibration at night and then they w they come back to their body their physical body wakens up and then we lower and drain that vibration again then we have to go back to sleep we raise our vibration when you're getting very tired and very drained throughout the daytime and you feel like mentally exhausted like you need to have some sleep that's when you've actually drained your spiritual body's energy you've depleted that down so our spiritual body needs to have a recharge. You want to imagine it like um, plugging in your cell phone at night. You want to imagine that your your physical body and your your that's the cell phone. And then when you plug your cell phone into the um, outlet at nighttime and you get a full charge and wake feeling refreshed in the morning, that's what happens when you plug into the spiritual realm. Uh, so what happens is your physical body goes to bed it goes to rest you actually leave your spirit your, or your physical body with your spiritual body so they're together but then you actually leave and or tune in raise your vibration and to the spiritual realm that's where we get our energetic charge our spiritual body is energy so we have to raise out of the physical body or we have to kind of put the physical body and the physical mind to rest a little bit so that we can naturally raise without any uh, blocking interference from our mind and our stubbornness, right? And so we raise naturally and we align with all the energetic and the spiritual realm and we raise our vibration and we tune in and some really cool things happen when we do that and so we begin to recharge our spiritual body so this is the most amazing thing and so we don't just cover like during this uh, video I'm going to be talking about some astro travel and some different things that happen but I'm also going to be talking about there's 10 different types of dreams that normally happen uh, when you fall asleep and um, you experience your dream state at night. So we're going to be talking about that. And also, I'm going to be talking to you about why or how is dreaming a window into your spiritual body and, and your spiritual self and its vibration. Like how can we use that to help us um, learn how to keep our vibration high and raised? what's happening there so we're going to talk about that as well and what i want you to think about as far as dreaming from here on out because um i would like you to look at it a little bit differently is when you're dreaming or when you call your call it a dream and you wake up it's actually a memory of what has been going on in the spiritual realm so instead of thinking of it as just like a, a random act of nothingness right like dreaming that it just doesn't seem to make much sense or how would we use that in our everyday life well we use it we should use it and we can use it because dreaming is a memory of your nighttime activities it's a memory of what's happening in the spiritual realm just as if 
your physical memory is a memory and your brain activity is a memory of what happens during the daytime um, throughout the day you also have a memory of what happened in, with your spiritual body and the spiritual aspect of yourself uh, during the nighttime and that's what's called dreaming it's your spiritual memory of what you did and that is something that's really amazing so remember as we get into this you want to keep in mind that dreaming is a gateway into your psychic abilities your psychic senses and your spiritual body so it's your connection and your doorway into the psychic realm it's your connection and your psychic senses and your psychic um, abilities you just open the doorway and you go in it's super cool you do this at nighttime you open the doorway you go in and you have access to all the spiritual stuff and spiritual abilities now for those of you who are trying to find balance this should make more sense to you because um, when you're awake with your physical body and your sleep and you're utilizing your spiritual body just think how much that you're actually spending how much time that you're spending in your lifetime using and utilizing your your spiritual body as well as you're utilizing your physical body you're basically utilizing that without even kind of knowing about it at least 40 percent of your life and that's super amazing and when you start understanding more about how that works when you start understanding more about our spiritual body basically working with us 40 percent of the time then it really prompts people to want to tune into that more understand it better and really learn how to align the two because then you kind of come together as a whole person you know when you're understanding your sp the spiritual aspect of yourself and you're under understand dreaming nighttime etc and you're understanding the physical aspect of yourself it allows you to see yourself more as a whole person and when that happens you can many times take that high vibration roll it over into the daytime and start aligning up with your high vibration in the daytime as well and if you can do that that's amazing your health can fall in line, uh, like that you start working with the universal laws and the flow a lot better, and things can just, you can start thinking about things and they start really uh, lining up in your life with a, like a domino effect. And also, you can start trusting your, your intuition and your psychic ability more when you're understanding that it's really 40% of your life already, even if you didn't think it was any part of your life. So that's some really super cool stuff. So. I'm going to talk about these 10 phases, but I'm going to kind of go in the the way that it mostly happens for some people. So because as we get into the later phases of dreaming, and it doesn't mean that you're necessarily you're going to start from a one and advance to a 10. It just means that most people dream on a scale on the near the ones, twos and threes and that sort of thing. Most of them are having that type of dream. But as you advance your your um, psychic knowledge and become more in tune with your spiritual body, more of those people tend to dream in the higher levels of dreaming. And you can jump around. You can be having higher level dreams and then lower level dreams and whatnot. But in order to translate your dreams, if that's what you're looking to do, you really kind of need to know the levels of dreaming and what types of dreaming that you're having. So the first thing that you can do is kind of break it down into, oh, I'm having this category dream or this category dream and then you can that's where you can start your translation and then you can work backwards from there and the more knowledge that you have the easier it's going to be to trans translate your dreams okay so we're going to get into category one which is basically an energetic dream and these are the ones that confuse people the most because they are sometimes random but a lot of times it includes tornadoes um, an energetic dream will con include tornadoes, catastrophes, teeth falling out, that sort of thing. So, so what is an energetic dream? An energetic dream is what your spiritual body is actually vibrating at during the daytime. So whatever you're sort of aligning with, whatever your vibration is aligning with energetically, I see this often. A lot of people will be like, no, no, like I'm totally fine with my life right now and I'm loving how things are going or this isn't bothering me or that major event, I'm totally stress-free on that or I, it's not bothering me like you think it is, I'm good. And But your energetic doesn't lie, your energy doesn't lie, your vibration won't lie. So um, you can maybe use your mind to go, 
I'm stronger than this. I can deal with this. I'm not worried about it. It's not an issue. I'm going to power through. You know, you can maybe think that, but you're, again, your energetic vibration isn't going to lie. So these energetic dreams can be really poignant. And this is when you're talking like a window into your vibration. This is like the cheat sheet is what I call it. And I like these because even myself, it doesn't matter how advanced that you are, but even if you're going through stressful times or some different things are happening, and they might even be positive times. If they're going to be positive, you're going to be dreaming about some really cool energetic stuff. But regardless where you're at on an energetic level, um, you're going to be able to, you know, kind of get a, a seat, a window, a first row seat into looking into your own spiritual body and seeing where are you really at in the daytime. Am I, am I feeling accurate about that? So an energetic um, dream would be, like I said, it's a lot of, it's a lot of things like, um, if you wake up and had a dream where there was tornadoes, it, a lot of times it will have to do with landscape or um, the terrain. So it might have to do with water. It might have to do with tornadoes. It might have to do uh, with volcanoes or some type of catastrophe, or it could be a hurricane and that sort of thing. And so these types of dreams will, when it comes to a catastrophe or something like that, I'm going to break it down a little bit. They basically have to do with stress. And um, before I get into that a little bit further, I skipped over one thing. When, it, when I say this is like a window being able to look at your spiritual body, the cool thing, why it's really awesome is because you know how people can take your blood pressure um, and they can kind of review your physical health, take your temperature and take kind of an assessment of your physical body and how it's actually doing. Um, this, when you get into kind of translating your energetic dreams, this is sort of an assessment of how your spiritual body is doing. So that you can really assess from the outside looking in and that is something I kind of skipped over that I want to make sure that we got into. So uh, chaotic, chaos part um, that has to do with like, um, you know, like I said, hurricane, tornado, some type of a catastrophe. A lot of times those will show up if you're having some major stress or life events in your, in your um, world. Uh, I remember when I was younger, I would have dreams about like if I was dreaming, if I was really stressed out about maybe three different things or, um, you know, I'd have dream of three tornadoes. So that's something that's really common when it comes to an energetic dream, something, or you might have be dreaming about a hurricane or a windstorm or some type of landscape, like a lava being in a tornado, um, that sort of thing. Uh, those are energetic dreams and those are usually related to stress when you're worried about tornadoes. Teeth falling out. People dream about teeth falling out a lot. And that's really feeling out of control or having the fear of not having control or losing something when you have teeth falling out. And those are really, really common dreams. Some other ones are if you can't uh, get a hold of somebody on the phone, the phone is busy. Um, of course, you have the rotary dial phones. I, dr that's, uh, I hate that dream. But that's the one I get a lot where I'm like trying to dial somebody. And of course, they have like a million zeros or nines for some reason always in this dream and then of course you get to the end and you screw up and you have to do it all over again if you're having dreams where you cannot reach somebody on the phone these are a communication issues so whoever you're trying to reach usually and if it's it maybe you're just trying to reach anybody and you're trying to just go for help you know that sort of thing these types of dreams are uh, because you're having communication issues and you feel like, let's just say you're calling anybody 911 and you're trying to get help, then you feel like nobody's responding to help you. Maybe your guides or whatever, whoever's out there, you're not getting support and help from. If you're trying to call a specific person, then you're having communication issues with that sort of person. Potentially being locked in somewhere, a place, a car, something like that. You're feeling confined and you're feeling like you're struggling, um, you know. And here's the, also the key with this. You want to pay attention to how you're feeling during each of these dreams, when it, especially when it comes to energetic dreams. So a lot of people, if you're locked in a room or something like that nature, you're feeling claustrophobic, stressed, fearful, but you're feeling blocked and trapped. 
So somewhere in your regular life, you're feeling trapped into a situation, trapped into a scenario or whatever, um, and that you're afraid of being trapped and you don't like that feeling. Water. Water is usually the subconscious. So a lot of times if people are in water, there's either people around them or like um, things around them, like maybe their car is there. So if you're dreaming about water, there's something in the back of your subconscious that you're maybe worried about or just thinking about. Uh, for instance, uh, the other thing too is if you're dreaming about losing money, um, losing money is a when you're dreaming about that is a sign that you're feeling like you're actually poor. <laughs> I want to say poor, but you're actually, you're feeling like somewhere energetically money's being pulled from you. Um, but the opposite is also true. If you dream of winning the lottery or if you're dreaming of having lots of money in your purse, then you're actually feeling abundant. So again, with energetic dreams, pay attention to not the scenario necessarily, pay attention to the feeling. How are you feeling in these dreams? Because energetic dreams, remember, they're the little window into your soul and your spiritual body. So you want to really address how you're feeling. Then when you get to understand how you're feeling, then in your waking time, you can go, okay, well, I was feeling this way. What in my life is causing me to feel this way or could possibly feel this, make me feel this way that I'm sort of not address, addressing? What's happening right now in my life that I could relate to this feeling, okay? So then random dreams, random dreams that make no sense. This really throws people off. Um, it, some guy in a monkey suit is bringing you a banana um, and he drove a bicycle there. You know, I don't know, some type of random dreams. Here's another thing when it comes to dreams is when you're in the spiritual realm and you are experiencing all this stuff that you know to be true in the spiritual realm, if your physical brain does not have a Rolodex of it, so your brain doesn't have a memory of it, something it can relate it to, or something that it's learned, what happens when you wake up from a random dream that you've had is there's been information that's been lost in translation. So for instance, you are experiencing something on a spiritual level when you wake up your brain is going through its rolodex going okay what did this what did this mean and what was that and so it starts placing random objects and people or places or things into your memory of where you were in the spiritual realm but since a lot of times people don't remember the spiritual realm that well or don't have enough knowledge yet of the spiritual realm again the more advanced you get, what usually happens when it comes to your psychic senses and the spiritual, your spiritual body and whatnot, the more that your brain has in its Rolodex to then translate this information. So you want to think about it as if somebody's like maybe translating Japanese into English and some things get lost in the translation. So you just throw a few ad libs in there, right? So that's what happens when you have random dreams like that is whatever you were experiencing that time at that point in the uh, spiritual realm, your physical brain uh, is having trouble making sense from its Rolodex of knowledge. And so then it just slaps some things in there randomly. Life path dreams is the second category I want to talk about because this is the second most common when it comes to the categories of people dreaming in. And that's when you dream about where you're at on your life path. So for instance, um, you we all have a chart and a life path. And when you pull back and look at it psychically, it can look kind of mapped out. And like um, before you're born, you do put certain marks on your birth chart, like, you know, point A and point B, you're gonna experience this and experience this. But when it comes to free will, you can either go straight, you can go off on a rocky road, you can take a path in circles and end up over here. Even if you're gonna, if you've written that in your chart, you can take all these crazy roads, right? Well, a life path dream can be helpful because sometimes when you're, you're, under, you're trying to understand how you're feeling about where you're at on life, they're usually shown in pictures such as roads, buildings, houses, elevators, and cars are really common when it comes to life path dreams. So a lot of bicycles, any t form of transportation or any type of building, these are usually life path dreams. So 
if you're on a twisty road, you might be feeling like in your lifetime that you're just back and forth and back and forth. If you're on a rocky road, you may have gone off your path some and you're taking a harder route. Um, if you're going up a straight hill, then you're really feeling resistance in your life and you're trying to push against that. And so again, why is this helpful? Because if you're having a dream that you're really pushing up, you're going up a hill and you're barely making it, somewhere in your waking hours, you are pushing against something. You're resisting something energetically and you need to figure out how to resolve that. You need to figure out how not to push against it, how not to resist. If you feel like you've gone off your life path and you're in this rocky area, then when you wake up, you need to be like, okay, I, I definitely feel like I'm off my path and I'm taking a harder route. So I need to figure out where does that apply in my life, okay? And so then a lot of times there's also... Um, you will dream of a house or an elevator. Ele elevators, uh, when you're going up in them, you're going up towards your higher consciousness. So if you're dreaming about going up in an elevator, you're actually raising your consciousness level. If you're dreaming of going down in an elevator, you're usually trying to ground yourself and become more in your physical body. Houses all represent you um, in plumbing, interior stuff. If things are breaking on the inside, then a lot of times that's stuff going on internally that you're maybe worrying about. Like, so for instance, um, if you have pipes breaking, you might be having a bladder infection or something like that. So that's really common. Um, the other thing is if you're in a house or in an apartment or something like that where it's a, like really cluttered, there's a lot of paper or a lot of junk around, then that means energetically you're very cluttered and everything's not flowing nicely so you need to clear energetically so you need to either do a clearing energetically or figure out how to get your energetic flow lined out and and straighter so that's what happens when you have a lot of clutter around you with a house and if you're running up against a road block or you're uh, going fast in a car a lot of times that means that you feel like you don't have any control over your life and uh, you're just feeling like you know you're being blocked from doing this or you're just out of control if you're driving too fast the next one that a lot of people love and it's really fun to have sometimes but they get confused and they confuse it with just meaning nothing or they think it's part of their real life now is past life dreams and one of the things that I want to address before I get into the fun part of past life dreams is a lot of people do dream about themselves like um, dying or dead, like above themselves or something. And then they wake up and they freak out and, oh my God, does this mean I'm dying? Well, 99.9% .9 of the time, that is a past life dream. So if you ever dream that you're dying or you've died and you're looking above yourself, almost always it's a past life dream. You can look at the scenario around you, um, will be a different time frame. They might be in different clothes. You, you might be able to figure out your, uh, um, your age or your gender of who you are. Um, and there's, there, you're gonna notice that it's not gonna fit into this time frame most likely. And the other thing uh, with a past life dream that can be really interesting is um, usually there's a, uh, well, I would say most of the time, uh, there is a story. They tell a story. So they have a beginning, middle, and end. And that's how you can tell a past life dream from other dreams that you're having. So if it has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end, and it has a story that you're understanding and usually past life dreams are with different people, but you may not have other people in there. Um, beginning, middle, and end, those are almost always past life dreams. And like I said, if you're a lucid driver, you can even ask yourself um, during these times, like, what age am I? What gender am I? You might get a name. You can uh, look around and see like what or if you're not getting like an age or whatever. Um, and even when you wake up, you can still do this and get an answer. Um, an answer will pop into your head. You may wake up and be like, I didn't ask myself any of those questions, but I wonder what time frame I was in and like 17, 19 might pop into your head. Or you might think to yourself, like I wonder where and maybe someplace in Europe might pop pop into your head or you may wonder um, what your name was and maybe Billy pops into your head. Do you see what I mean? So you don't have to necessarily be a lucid dreamer to get more information on past life dreams but if you're having a dream that has a um, beginning, middle, and an end and it has a follow a followable 
sequence, then most likely and tells a story, most likely that's a past life dream. So that's really cool. Um, the other th number four, what happens is we have spirit contact dreams and these next two, the spirit contact dreams and the one after this, um, this is going to be a lot of times when you're astral traveling, you're not astral traveling the entire night, but you're astral traveling most of the night, usually when you're dreaming. And so spirit contact dreams are when you're visited by loved ones who have passed or have not passed and they're currently alive. And when you're visited by loved ones, um, and like I said, they don't have to be past, they can be someone who's currently here, um, then usually those are spirit contact dreams. You actually, because people will go, well, I dreamt about so-and-so last night. You're almost always visiting with those people. Um, you can also be visited by guides and angels. The setting doesn't matter in a spirit contact dream, just FYI. Um, past lives, it's nice to learn about the setting, but like it doesn't matter if it's like an older setting, a newer setting or whatever. But when you're having a spirit contact dream, like I said, you will, you will either feel like you know them, you will know them from passing, or they may be somebody who you currently know. They're usually a loved one a lot of times when you're having spirit contact dreams. But you can have spirit guides, um, councils, and angels, you can have conversations with them in a spirit contact dream. Um, dreams about the other side, and like I said, these are both times when you're usually astral traveling, so you're usually out of body and you will meet up somewhere with someone um, that you maybe had, um, uh, you just wanted to meet up with someone like, um, I don't know, uh, grandma, auntie, or something like that, and or dreams about the other side, these, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that happens on the other side. And when you dream about the other side, you are again, astral traveling. So spirit contact dreams, you're astral traveling dreams about the other side, you're astral traveling. A lot of times when you meet with a spirit loved one, um, or a spirit, have a spirit connection, a lot of times you are actually on the other side meeting with them. Sometimes they come to you, but a lot of times you're over there. So there's a lot of stuff going on uh, when you're dreaming about the other side. And there's like buildings and parks and events and social things and jobs, all kinds of stuff are going on and it is very cool. How do you know if you've had dreams about the other side versus a past life dream? Because they feel very, very different. When you dream about a pa or when you dream past lives, they feel like what, like a normal thing, like your normal life somehow. But when you um, are dreaming of the other side, uh, what's happening is you, you when you're there, you literally get the most euphoric feeling. It feels amazing, and the architecture is usually striking and very different when you're dreaming about the other side. So it it feels like you've been there before. It is the most euphoric feeling. You will wake up going, wow, this was a different type of dream. So that's how you know when you're visiting the other side. It's a very cool vibration. Again, you'll definitely notice stuff about the architecture, which will, it's an amazing experience, which will also bring me into the next thing, which we are talking about here, which is educational dreaming. Usually when you start advancing in the psychic realm and you start advancing your psychic knowledge, um, a lot of times you will be, you will find yourself as traveling to the other side or being called to the other side while you're sleeping or, or dreaming. And you'll learn, you'll learn things over there. You'll either be taught things over there. You might be um, being taught stuff. You might be teaching things. Um, you might be going, finding yourself in a library. Um, you might be experiencing a lecture. So this might be a time when you're meeting with a council or your guides. Some of these dreams are frustrating because a lot of times when you're, um, education, you're having an educational dream, uh, you'll be somewhere where there'll be a lot of books. They'll either, a lot of times it'll either be you one-on-one -on -one with somebody and you're, you're like, you each have a book. You'll either be in a, you can be in a library a huge library and again you'll have a book and or you can be in front of a council or a panel um, these are usually when you have an educational dreams and where you're learning and then you may be sitting in front of a panel there may or may not be a book um, in uh, but what's frustrating for people is when they have the books a lot of times you're they're blank 
and you can't see the writing. And it's not that you can't see the writing, the writing's not there. It's when you awake out of the dream, you cannot remember or see any of the information that's on there because again, it would be lost in translation. The spiritual realm knowledge will be lost in translation with your physical mind. However, um, you will still have retained the information. People go, well, what if, what if I'm learning all this cool th stuff and I need to know how to remember? You don't have to worry about it because you download the information almost like you would download it from on your computer, like a PDF file. You actually download the information while you're learning. So um, you don't have to worry. You didn't miss the information. You essentially download it. The other thing... Um, there, oh, and plus you can have books and scrolls. That's another thing. A lot of times if you're working with Akashic Records or things like that, um, they they have maps. They use maps. And they can use even use what look like digital maps, which is really interesting because I'm sure you would think it would be like old school, but they don't. They look like 3D digital and that sort of thing. Um, but the other thing that people do not just they don't just receive education on the other side but you can actually spend a lot of time doing healing work on the other side when you're advancing your psychic abilities um, and your intuitive abilities a lot of times these people are healers and many times you might find that you are doing healing work so you may find that you're doing healing on somebody you may find that you're doing healing on a group of people many times i constantly remember um, waking and then I will have worked all night. I will have like uh, lines and lines of people where I'm doing readings or en energetic healings on. So I've had people ask me about that, but absolutely you will go over when you're advancing and you will do uh, healing work on the other side because um, you know, you need to, or people need you and, or you do it for practice and whatnot as you're developing your abilities. So that's the educational dreaming. Uh, the next one, which is kind of interesting for some people, is dimensional shifting, and that is going to other dimensions. So not everybody here on this planet is feels like they are from here, and they are called star people. But and that's because there are several different dimensions. So you can be reincarnated here even if you weren't here and you were in other dimensions and other lifetimes that's also very common so not everybody was always reincarnated here on earth how do you tell if you're having a dimensional dream a couple different ways one is the landscape is usually very different the landscape and the environment looks very different so you kind of want to think about like thor star wars avatar that sort of thing and that's how people come up with these types of things in movies, which I find very interesting. So for me, it's kind of fun when I go to movies and I'll see a landscape or like a sci-fi thing and I'll be like, oh yeah, that is very familiar to me because I can always feel when it's based on a real type dimension. Um, some of the writers and the producers may or may not know that they're basing on a real dimension. They may have thought that they've dreamt it up in their imagination, but that's where we get our knowledge, right? We get our knowledge from the spiritual realm through what people think is their imagination a lot of the times. So uh, that's how you can tell is the landscape is very different. And there's a lot of real memories from past lives in, in that people also have um, when they come up and they start creating these movies and whatnot. So these are some of these are very real places. They are very cool. There's a ton of different dimensions, ton of different types of beings, um, which you may or may, may not remember and or see if you're having dimensional dreams. The other thing is a lot of times you can or you may or may not see aliens. Um, I have gotten messages from them before. I tend, they tend to come to me as human looking. I don't know, they may come to you as something different, but usually they're, they're giving me very specific information either about our planet or the energy or what's happening here. Also, dimensional dreams, a lot of times you can see planetary grids um, and you, you will be shown usually from a person who looks like more of a star person. It can like be an alien or somebody who looks different, but you can be shown stars and grids of energy, uh, universal energy, how, what's happening with the planets, what's happening as far as time, what's happening energetically uh, with energy waves and that sort of thing. These are also dimensional dreams, but they are super 
um, common and or helpful, super helpful. Um, so I do a lot of, um, I have a lot of dimensional dreams where I'm looking at the stars and the planets and they're showing me different patterns and things uh, that are happening. The psychic grid, that's an interesting thing, which is number eight. And this is when people, when people type, uh, tap into the psychic grid, they can get a lot of information. So you want to imagine this, uh, this constant feed of knowledge. And I guess I would explain it like imagine how people think of the Kashic records, a constant feed of energetic knowledge that is past, present, and future, okay? This is a psychic grid that's constantly circling. And when you tap into the psychic grid, when your spiritual body releases and the vibration raises, when you raise your vibration, you can tap into this wave and this psychic grid of information. And you can see what's going on all over the world. It might be something that's happening right then. It might be something that is happening, you know, across town that you shouldn't know about. Um, but when you have a, what people call a, um, a psychic dream or something like that, usually you've tapped into the psychic grid, um, gathered knowledge from that, and that would be a premonition dream or a psychic dream when you tap into the psychic grid. So that's something that people do every once in a while. Um, usually if you have the ability to tap into the psychic grid, again, you're advancing um, your abilities are advancing at that point. Uh, spiritual testing. This is something that's interesting that I want to talk about, and then I'm going to get into a little bit of astro travel before I get into the last topic here. I don't like to freak people out, so I don't like to talk about spiritual testing, but when you're very, very advanced, a lot of times, and I kind of explain this like a video game, the more what happens is, or think of it like going through kindergarten through, um, you know, middle school, then through high school, then through college, and then you get your PhD or whatever. Um, when you're advancing spiritually, you actually advance, when you're advancing your psychic knowledge and whatnot, you're actually advancing spiritually. When you're advancing your spiritual knowledge, you're, you're advancing levels. And so as you advance to higher levels, when you graduate to a certain level, just like a regular graduation, a lot of times you will have to do some spiritual testing. And so this will test your abilities and your spiritual knowledge. When you're spiritually having a spiritual test, um, usually you will face some type of weird creature or entity. There not, is not usually a landscape. It's almost like a gray or a dark area. And you'll need to experience pulling in as much white light as possible and pulling it in until your white light is stronger and you are much um, bigger energetically with the white light that then this negative entity can deal with you. And so another thing that tends to happen during that time is you may find yourself um, reading prayers or reciting prayers that maybe you didn't know that you knew or some type of chant or something. So when you're having a negative entity type dream where there, there's basically um, where it's like maybe like a gray space or dark space, uh, then you want to pull in as white light, much white light as possible. And um, you, you might find that you're um, reciting some type of prayer. So always just remember, just keep pulling in white light, pulling in white light. And this, these type of things, I don't want to get into too much because unless you're really advanced, you're most likely not experiencing that. Most likely you might be experiencing something else that freaks people out. And that is when you are astral traveling, um, many times people think that they are uh, fighting off demons, that there's some gray entity around them and whatnot. And there's some very easy keys or very easy flags to tell when you're astral traveling. One is sleep paralysis. If you're astral traveling, traveling, what is sleep paralysis? Well, you can't move your body. You feel um, confined and you cannot move. You cannot scream, that sort of thing. And why is that? Because when your spiritual body leaves your physical body, just like it does if you've been to a funeral home or whatnot, you can tell, you can feel the person's not there, but they're not able to move, right? That's what happens during that time. Well, same happens when you're astral travel. If you awake when your spiritual body is not 
completely back into your physical body, you will not be able to move because that's the essence of you and that's what allows you to do all this stuff. So um, it, you will not get stuck out of body. Do not worry about that. You will not get lost out of body. You are in with a, a, a silver cord. Doesn't happen. You don't get lost. It cannot be cut. Not going to happen. But And you will not stay in that state for very long. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's scary and it's not cool. But um, it won't only take you so long to get back in. Someone can wake you, whatever. How do you get awoke out of your spiritual body before or what happens how does that happen where you f feel sleep paralysis usually you've been awoke by something a noise um something has startled you usually kind of try to awake you you may not have heard it because you're in the spiritual realm but something will have happened and then you wake up before you're completely back in now what happens that usually scares people and this is not spiritual testing this is something very different is a lot of times they'll be like, oh, a demon was trying to get into my body. Um, I couldn't breathe. I felt like something was sitting on my chest. And it's usually right before you wake up. Um, is very scary and people think that uh, or they're seeing gray energies or gray entities um, this is all again the lost in translation where your brain is trying to figure out and translate what it's seeing as you're going back into body and because you're so, so lucid and you remember because you were startled awake then it what does it do your brain goes into the rolodex of knowledge and most often than not it has a rolodex of like scary movies and stuff and so it translates the any types of energies it sees around usually it translates into scary dream energy or dark energy and why does this happen well it happens because if you wake when you're coming back into your your uh, physical body, uh, most of the time it scares the daylights out of people. They're like, oh my God, what is happening? And they get afraid. When they get afraid, your brain goes to the Rolodex of fear. Okay, afraid, fear, what's happening? Slaps a scary picture on it and goes, oh my God, a demon's trying to get in. There's no demons trying to get into your body. It's not happening. Even if you do the spiritual testing, there's no demons trying to get in, okay? That's not happening. Um, and there's no great entities trying to get in or around you, um, especially if it happens right before you wake up. The minute that somebody tells me I was paralyzed, somebody was sitting on my chest, somebody was sitting on my bed, it was great, it was scary, and it was bad. I'm like, you were astral traveling. I mean, you woke up right during it. It's like, a, it's so easy to tell even if you're not psychic. So, um, and like I said, that's because you are afraid at that point. I asked to travel very um, um, often and I'm a very lucid astral traveler. And so I tend not to be afraid. I know I actually, um, when I leave body and I can see my body and I've told these stories so many times, but I actually will find myself out floating somewhere. And sometimes I'll think, why am I out here? And then I'll realize, oh, I'm not awake because you're very much you, you're floating off the ground, but it is definitely real. Um, and then I will just float over to my body and I will go above it and I will slip right in and then I will wake. So um, when you're not afraid during astral travel, you won't see the gray entities and all the you know things that are scary. So that's something that I don't want you to confuse with um, you know, spiritually testing. Uh, usually by the time you're spiritually testing, you have a lot of knowledge anyways on um, negative entities and uh, high vibration stuff. So those are very different. Um, just don't, don't confuse the two. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to talk about is, or the last phase is the higher consciousness and higher power dreams. So these are actual, these are dreams where you're actually talking to a higher power or you're talking to God. Now, these dreams, you will not question, was I talking to God? Was I talking to a higher power? No, you will know immediately. You will be like, wow, that was intense. That was unlike anything I've ever experienced before. And oh my God, that was amazing. They're, the conversations are also usually short. It, they usually only happen when they have something to say to you. The conversations tend to be short and you will wake up feeling like a very powerful, euphoric 
feeling, okay? So that's something that usually, now just to keep in mind, this is not something that you have to be very spiritually advanced to um, have happen. Anybody can have this happen if, if a higher power or God wants to speak directly to you. Um, but it doesn't happen often. It usually, I mean, it, it may happen to you two times in a lifetime. So, like, you shouldn't be, if it's happening often and you're having long conversations, it's usually a counsel, a guide, or something like that, okay? So, the other thing, if you're really interested, just to end this, um, as to, I'm wrapping this up, if you're really interested in learning how to interpret it, your dreams, it's really important that you learn how to develop your psychic abilities. So um, it's l really important that you learn how to develop this spiritual side of yourself, this 40% stuff that you're using over here. It's really important that you learn how to integrate that into your waking time. And as you gain more knowledge in um, developing your psychic abilities and how the this um, your spiritual self works, how your spiritual body um, tunes into how it feels. As you learn to advance that, your brain will gather a lot more knowledge that will allow it to really help you translate your dreams in a way that you will start finding very easy to translate. So um, if you're really interested in dream interpretation, you'll want to learn how to advance yourself on a psychic level. You'll want to really learn how to do that. And so I am uh, teaching that class or teaching my class on psychic ability. It's psychicabilityclass.com. I'll throw up the um, link after if you're interested. But I teach this class not just so that you can learn to tune into your psychic abilities, um, like if you want to do readings or be a healer. But as you can understand from what I've been talking about, you, it, your spiritual realm and the spiritual body is literally 40% of your existence. And then you have your other 60%, which is your physical stuff. I really teach, I really want you guys to learn how you can combine the two and how you can use this 40% of yourself in this 60% of yourself time and how you can merge the two together is really meant, you're meant to be a whole person. You're meant to have these two halves blend into each other and you will make the most amazing uh, choices and you will have some really cool things happen when you start learning how to trust your intuition, you start learning how to use your psychic abilities and whatnot. And the way I teach the class, again, is it's not just to advance your abilities like, you know, at will, to do a reading, to do a healing. I really want you guys to learn how to utilize your abilities in your everyday life choices that you're making all the time. You should be utilizing it with everyday decisions. I had a, I was talking to somebody today and I find that, you know, I don't just use my own intuition, psychic ability. I know this because people ask me this. I don't just use it, you know, when I'm doing readings or when I'm teaching or whatnot, but I use it all the time. I use it more than I use my brain to help guide me through things. I use my psychic ability first or my intuition first. I use how I feel here first to guide me towards decisions. Then I use my brain to go, okay, yeah, that seems reasonable. I've trained to go the opposite. Most people use their brain and then they don't use their intuition or psychic ability all to, all to make any choices and or they um, use their brain and then a little bit of their intuition and then they override it with their brain because they think people do that out of fear they think that they're afraid to make this choice or that choice or whatever in their life right so they're afraid to move forward um, when it comes where it comes to their intuition because their brain has all this knowledge and goes, okay, well, here's exactly why that you should make these decisions, X, Y, Z. Well, if you depend on your intuition, your psychic ability, you're actually tuning in to the psychic grid or you're tuning in to um, some energetic information that just feels good to you and your brain's going, but... I don't understand why, if it just feels good, it's not making any sense, but your intuition, your psychic ability is tuned into future events, tuned into ener energy, universal energy that you're not quite, your brain's not quite 
um, well, and you're not supposed to use it with your brain. Your brain is not supposed to filter through energy. Your spiritual body is supposed to filter through energy. Um, and so it, it has access to all this other knowledge that's going to be good for you or maybe not so good. Maybe your intuition goes, no, I want to steer clear of this. And so you have so much more knowledge in the, the future, the past, present, and future with your spiritual body than you ever could hope to have with your brain. And your brain absolutely goes on history. Your brain and its knowledge goes on history and past events and current events. It definitely doesn't go on future events or energy reading or any of that. And the world is energetically based. So I teach a lot about how to integrate that into your everyday life. My choices, I basically use, um, I've trained myself, well, just because every time I tried to use my brain, um, to make my major decisions and I go, okay, primarily I'm going to think through this really hard and I'm going to follow what my um, knowledge says, then I'll end up being like, why did I do that? That was not smart. Sometimes, you know, it will they will be in alignment. This seems like a good idea. We should do this. Your intuition's like, yeah, I'm totally on board. That's very cool. Those work out. But when you're um, finding that you're wanting to make different choices, if you're finding you're not happy where you're at in life, if you're finding that you're feeling frustrated, uh, to learning how to tune into your intuition, psychic ability, and learning how to integrate that into your everyday life is a really fantastic asset because what that usually means if, you, if you're not following it is you're following your physical senses and that's probably getting you where you're at. So if you're interested in learning how to uh, develop those abilities more, I'm going to throw up the link afterwards and you can check it out. If you're not, that's cool too. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully I gave you a lot of information that you were looking for. Thank you for tuning in and I think that you'll have a good time um, learning how to translate your dreams. Oh, one last thing before I forget is somebody said, or I've had people say, what happens if I can't remember my dreams? Like I, I don't dream. Well, you all dream because what's dreaming? Dreaming is a memory of what you're doing on the other side or what you're doing in the spiritual realm, right? Um, we all have that memory, but two things are either happening. Number one, you're not having enough knowledge at all about your spiritual body, the spiritual realm and the spiritual aspect of things, either number one, or number two, you're in a REM sleep um, always before you wake up. So I don't tend to get in REM sleep very often, but if you're in a REM sleep, one of the tricks that I have people do if they feel like they're not remembering their dreams is either set an alarm two hours before they wake. Um, most people tend to be the most lucid dreamers between 10 o'clock at night and 3 a.m. if you're on a normal schedule. If you're not on a normal schedule, then it'll be a different time frame and you can learn to where's your 3 a.m. time for your schedule. Um, but usually two hours before you wake, you can set an alarm or if you get up to get a glass of water, uh, you can think for a minute, okay, what was I just dreaming about? And you can jot that down and then go to sleep. Uh, because basically, if you feel like you're not dreaming, it's because you've been in REM sleep for a while and you're probably a deep REM sleeper right before that you wake up. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, have a wonderful day and we shall convene again soon. All right, aloha.